Today we're going to be unpacking back-to-back -back run days and double run days. I'm Lindsay Perry from CoachPerry.com where we help you get stronger, faster, fitter. We often get asked the question at CoachPerry.com, if I don't have time to do my one hour run, can I split them into two half an hour runs? Or what they try to do is say, okay, I can't do the one hour run, but could I split that up into a 45 minute run in the morning and a 45 minute run in the afternoon? And the answer is that we can split up run days to make up the volume that is on the program. You will get almost the same physiological benefit out of those two runs as you will from doing the, the single run. Where we get a little bit unstuck is when it comes to the long runs on the weekend, for example, because again, we often get people say, I don't have time to do a two hour run um, on the weekend because of whatever function, but can I do an hour and an hour? It's the same answer. Yes, you can. You're going to get the same physiological benefit out of that, that run. But where it becomes important, particularly when we're training for very long races like marathons and ultras, is that we need some training runs that we do get the loading that we need all in one go. So you can definitely split up runs and do runs on on or double runs on days to get to your training volume but just make sure that at least two runs in your month are done in the way they intended and i'm talking specifically now about the long run it's not a good idea to try and split those runs in other words now an hour run i'm going to split into 45 and 45. it's not a good idea to do it that way because then you're going to get into a point where you're starting to do too much volume in a week and while you will probably cope a little bit better with 45 and 45 to be able to load a little bit of extra volume in the week it's a classic case of is the risk worth reward by pushing up your volume in the name of chasing after a couple of extra kilometers you are opening yourself up to not being able to recover properly before you get to the next training run. You are opening yourself up to the possibility of picking up an overuse injury. So therefore, in this instance, the, the risk isn't worth the reward. It's fine to split that run up into two 30-minute runs, but don't split it up into two 45-minute runs to try and get an extra half an hour in the day. All right, thanks, Linz. Uh, that inevitably brings us to the question, I'm sure this will come up, is, is who should be doing double run days? Double run days can be quite taxing on the body because you, obviously you're running, you're giving yourself very little time to, to recover and then you're running again. And so it is required that you are a particularly strong runner, uh, that you have a very big history with running. And so my advice is generally that only elite runners do double run days. And that's not even to say that every single elite runner should do a double run day. Now that we've unpacked double run days, Let's talk about back to back. So in other words, running two days in a row. Now, because most of us are working individuals, that is how a lot of training programs are set up is to run our two longest runs of the week often on the weekend uh, back to back. We get so much feedback, especially in South Africa, where the Comrades Marathon Ultra is, is the, the spine of the, the running community we get such so much feedback saying the biggest difference to my running or, or, or my performance in comrades came when i started doing the back-to-back -back long run and in, in all honesty i wish i could tell you that there was a really good scientific basis for that but it really came about because most of us have got time to run on the weekends and so we do tend to cram those long runs into the weekends. Lots of people ask us, okay, well, is the order of those two runs important? Does the longer run have to be on the second day? And it doesn't. We've done that for the most part because uh, where we live, very often the races are on a Sunday and so it's nice to go and do your training run as a part of a race, but you can interchange those. You can swap that the longer run is on the Saturday and the shorter one on the Sunday or vice versa. The key aspect is, of course, just, to, just keep an eye on how you are recovering and if you're not managing to recover properly, we do need to look at how we are struggling during your week. When you're training for races like ultras, it is good to learn to run on slightly tired legs, but it's very important for this method to work. It's very important to recognize that the second run on that weekend will be a run that's run on more tired legs. 
And so you have to be more forgiving in your, in your body. And the key to those training runs is time on your feet. It's not about how fast you can get through those runs. It's not about proving to yourself how fit you're getting because you can get your average pace down on these longer runs. So those back-to-back -back long run days absolutely work to both really give you an enormous boost to your endurance, but also to get you comfortable and used to being able to run on tired legs. But to be able to sustain that over a long period of time, it's absolutely critical that you do those runs easy enough. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you want to see how the easy um, and long runs fit into the whole scheme of things, you can click on, this, on the video on screen now and don't forget to hit the like button.